Today is May 22nd, 2017. It is day 123 of the Donald Trump White House regime. Donald Trump is the first Jewish, pre- I mean, the first president to visit the Israel crying wall. Yes, Donald Trump is in the promised land. As Steve Bannon flew home early, he's the only one with a lick of sense. But the internet and the world is still talking about the globe of globalism. You know, that glowing orb that Donald Trump put his hand on when he was in Saudi Arabia. People are alarmed by this. It's such a a weird picture to actually see Donald Trump telling the world, yes, I am a globalist. And many people have said there's nothing to it, but we all know that it's nothing more than a metaphor. A metaphor, because they cannot come out and just tell you, oh, all you poor people are screwed. They cannot really come out and tell you that. So they give you pictures and metaphors. Donald Trump with his hand on the globe, the globe of globalism, and there the king of Saudi Arabia with him. It's just a metaphor. It's an image. It's an image to tell you, the poor people, you ain't got a chance. No, no, you, you never did have a chance. Now, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if Donald Trump is making all these mistakes on his own or he's being advised badly or all of the above. I haven't really figured that out, why he's making all these mistakes. But when you're talking about this first overseas trip, I mean, you have to give him an F. He's making a lot of bad decisions. He's put his hand on the Illuminati globe. He bowed down to get a medal from a king. He's the first sitting president to put his hand on the crying wall. I mean, so many bad decisions. you got to give him an F. I know I'm giving him an F. And this is his first foreign overseas trip. It may be his last as a sitting president. Maybe he just don't give a shit. Maybe he doesn't care about the American people. We know he he likes uh, shiny gold medals put around his neck from kings. Talking about kings, I mean, I'm not sure if Donald Trump made any headway with Saudi Arabia on those pesky little things called elections, you know, elections uh, for the people. Oh, I forgot, dictators, dictators don't really like elections. They don't really care for them, do they? And then it, and it, it makes me wonder again, why are we giving them $350 billion in state-of-the-art weapons to a dictator, a dictatorship? I mean, there's just, I guess there's something inherently wrong. There's just something evil about Americans. American citizens giving a dictatorship $350 billion in state-of-the-art weapons. I mean, I know we've been doing it for decades. But now it's just coming to a point where it's ridiculous. And what makes it worse? There are actually people out there who are okay. They're comfortable with the fact that the American economy revolves around war and weapons. There are literally sinister, evil people out there who are actually okay that that's what drives the American economy, the military-industrial complex actually killing people with state-of-the-art weapons. And while we're on the subject of evil, sinister people in our government... Mr. Commerce Secretary himself, Wilbur Ross, well, he fell asleep during Donald Trump's speech in Saudi Arabia. And to think uh, this is the man who will get our economy rolling again, well, after he's done taking a nap, of course. And by looking at this picture, you can really tell that they're serious about putting Americans back to work. But seriously now, if you want to know how to get Wilbur Ross excited, all you have to do is tell him, Mr. Secretary, the chocolate is ready, and we're about ready to send those 60 tomahawks 
way over there and that fireworks in the sky. Whoopee! Bomb them, bomb them, bomb them. That's how you get Wilbur Ross all excited. Just telling the after dinner entertainment is sending the tomahawks to Syria. Then that son of a bitch wakes up. You know, in world history, there's been some very, very evil people out there in world history. I don't have time to name them all. But never, never did I ever hear in history that any of them said that bombing a country is the after-dinner entertainment. Never has that ever happened. If you do a Google on Donald Trump today, you get 372 million results in 1.05 seconds. As we stated earlier, Donald Trump becomes the first sitting U.S. president to visit the crying wall. And of course, you have to wonder to yourself, I mean, when he filled out that little prayer paper and he put it in the wall, was it praying to God to keep his job as commander-in-chief or was it to please God, impeach me so I can get on with my golf game? Did I mention today that there was no huge factory that broke ground that could employ 10,000 American deplorables. No, I did not mention it because it did not happen. And quite frankly, I'm getting tired of telling these bureaucrats in government that the companies are shutting down, companies are closing their doors because they just can't make it, especially with the high rents. You have to pay the rents to people like Jared Kushner. How in the hell can a businessman make it if you got a guy like Jared Kushner who can get a billion dollars from the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel and he buys the building and all his friends own all the buildings and you're forced to rent the damn building from him and then you got to go through the red tape and the fees and the fines and the permits and the... Forget about it. I mean, you just can't make it in a crooked, crony capitalism. This is, what it, this is what it's all about. This is crony capitalism. And it really irks me. It breaks my heart when I hear these young people saying, talking out there. I hear these Bernie Sanders and all these young people saying, Oh, capitalism doesn't work. Look at this. Capitalism doesn't work. And it breaks my heart. And, I'm, and they're too stupid to understand that this is not capitalism we're seeing here today. This is crony capitalism. When you have a Federal Reserve banking cartel who only gives the money to Jared Kushner and his people, and then they buy all the buildings, they say, hey, if you want to open up that little company there, if you want to open up your Sears or your Walmart, you're going to have to pay us. Well, maybe not Walmart. Walmart... Walmart is in on the scam. But if you want a mom and pop operation, that's why these companies are going out of business, going out of business because you've got to pay such high rent to people like Jared Kushner. It's a crooked system. It's crony capitalism. It's fascism. It's corporate fascism. It's American corporate fascism. And then you throw a little bit of socialism in there with a the welfare state. And it's such a huge mess that I don't even want to talk about it anymore. So I guess that explains why they throw all this bullshit at us every day. Touching the glowing orb, taking the metal, putting the piece of paper in a crying wall. I mean, all it is is a dog and pony show. The circus is off. The circus is off to Israel. Donald Trump. Nine-day overseas tour. The circus goes to Saudi Arabia. It goes to Israel. And now you got the uh, you got the internet calling him President Cuck. I mean, Donald Trump is making so many so many bad decisions. I'm I'm guessing that he he's tired of it. He's already tired. What is it? Only 123 days. He probably wants to get back to golfing. He didn't realize it was going to be this difficult. He really didn't. He may he may kind of made a little screw up when he got to Israel. He got to Israel and he, he told the Israelis, he, he's in a room with Israelis, and he says, uh, yeah, we just got back from the Middle East and here I am, boys, and I'm here to talk to you about a few things. And they must have been laughing because, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, you're still in the Middle East. Maybe I can explain what Donald Trump was thinking. You see, because this is very explainable. It's very, very explainable. The whole world knows, of course, that it's not very far to fly from 
you know, Saudi Arabia to Israel. It's all in the Middle East. Well, the world knows that. Most people do. But see, when you're Donald Trump, and you've lived in the, the bubble that he's lived in, when you've lived in the world that he lives in, New York and Hollywood. Well, this is easy to explain why he would say something like this. Because in his mind, it was true. He was in the Middle East. But when he got to Israel, it was a whole different ball game. I'll try to explain it to you. See, when he was in Saudi Arabia, these are the people he was talking to. It's very, very clear. These were the people. And then when he flies into Israel, it's a whole different game. He's going to be talking to people who look like this. I mean, not these exact people, but people who look like this. So again, let me just go over to see. So when he was in the real Middle East, in Donald Trump's mind, he was talking to people that look like this. And of course, when he got to Israel, well, that's a whole different nation in and of itself. Because they look like this, and he's done business with them in Hollywood. He did business with them in New York. So let's keep it going. Remember, we're in Donald Trump's mind here. In Donald Trump's mind, these are Middle Eastern people. They're from Syria. And these are the Israeli people, you know, that live in Israel type of people. Again, this, we're in Donald Trump's mind. You see, in Donald Trump's mind, these are the Middle Eastern people. They're Palestinians. It's very easy for Donald Trump. We are visual human beings. These are Middle Eastern people. But when he gets to Israel, we'll see now Israel, that is a European country. Donald Trump has it all figured out. It's everybody else that doesn't have it figured out. You see, these are Semitic people. Okay, we got that. And these are European people. All right, again, these are Semitic people. Okay? Now these are European people. On a roll here. Again, these are Semitic people. And again, we're looking at European people. It really is not that difficult. I mean, I don't care what they tell you in public school. Use your eyeballs. I don't need a genetic test. So for any snowflakes out there who want to call me an anti-Semitic, let this be a lesson to you. You don't even know what a Semitic person looks like. You are a snowflake. You are a brainwashed public school moron. And every time I hear the word anti-Semitic, it makes me want to rip somebody's throat out. Because that's how dumb America has become. That's literally how dumb America has become, that we, we as a people don't even know what Semitic people look like. Yeah, what a bunch of idiots. Okay, well, well, while we're on the subject of idiots, I mean, does God actually really read these little pieces of paper? I mean, does the God Yahweh read these pieces of paper? Because the God Yahweh's done nothing for me lately. So, let's continue the story on Apparently, Donald Trump is the first sitting president to ever come and visit this wall. He puts his little piece of paper in there. God, please make my golf game better. <laughs> Reaches in there. I mean, it's... Okay, I know I'm going to get a lot of bad comments. How dare you talk about the God Yahweh like that? How dare you? Blasphemy! I don't give a shit. What's Yahweh done for me lately? Let me tell you something. But again, Donald Trump becomes the first sitting U.S. president to visit the crying wall or the wailing wall, whatever you want to call it. Now, that kind of did surprise me because I saw pictures of, oh, I know I saw pictures of Obama there, Bush there, even I know Clinton was there. I mean, they're all suck-ups. They're all shills. They've all been there. I've seen pictures of it. So, I mean, I had to double check on this. Yes, I double-checked. Now, it is true. Donald Trump is the first sitting president to visit the wall. But I did some little searching on it. And yes, Bill Clinton, George Bush, Obama, they all visited the wall. But they visited, they visited the wall before or after their tenure. After their term was up or before their term was up. Now, here's Obama. This was actually before he became president. This was in July 
of 2008. So I'll give these presidents the benefit of the doubt. I mean, at least they didn't go there while they were the president. Because they, I guess they didn't want to be the first one to look like a complete idiot. So again, just to clear this up, there have been other presidents to visit the wall, but they did it before or after their tenure. So again, Donald Trump is the first sitting president. And it makes you wonder, you know how uh, Bill Clinton was our first African-American president, you know, in heart and soul. Bill Clinton was our first black president. It makes me wonder, is Donald Trump actually our first Jewish president, you know, in heart and soul? It's just, you know, something I think about occasionally. Okay, let's look for some more interesting news here. Apparently, Donald Trump brought some extra bulletproof glass to Israel for his hotel window. It says here, we know that uh, North Korea has modified their missile systems, something new, and Donald Trump is competing with Bill Clinton to be the most anti-Palestinian. We've already gone over the Saudi Arabian deal where we, why are we selling them $350 billion, a dictatorship, we already went over that one. And it says here that uh, Mike Flynn is pleading the fifth Wonder how Donald Trump feels about Mike Flynn pleading the fifth. Of course, that investigation will go on and on, and Donald Trump will no get nothing done. He'll get absolutely nothing done if he survives. Jared Kushner still has 90% of his real estate holdings. He probably may not be hanging around the White House much longer. And it says here, could Jared Kushner be tried for war crimes when he's dealing, when he's selling a dictatorship? Something to really think about. If you're going to be selling a dictator, a dictatorship, a hundred billion dollars in state-of-the-art warfare, uh, state-of-the-art weapon systems, I mean, yes, I think you could be tried for war crimes. Again, we already briefly said that Steve Bannon was the only guy with a lick of sense. He left early. He decided not to go to Israel because Steve Bannon does have his pulse on America. There are some people who understand what's going on in America, that we know who our masters are. People are waking up. Steve Bannon is fully aware of this. So he went home early. They said he hightailed it out of there and for good reason. Our leaders have no business overseas. When we have no jobs in this country, they have no business taking any trips overseas. But that's a whole different video. And here's a, uh, sort of an interesting story. Netanyahu had to force his ministers to show up at the Donald Trump meeting a lot of the Israeli ministers did not want to show up and meet Donald Trump. Benjamin B.B. Netanyahu forced them, and he may be already regretting it because apparently the uh, ministers are already embarrassing him. So, what a dog. It really is a circus, isn't it? It's a dog and pony show where B.B. has to force his ministers. And what kind of, what kind of government do they have? where the president can force the you know a congressman or a senator to do to go somewhere do what kind of government is that I'm not even so we'll just keep on looking for some news now here's the big news that everybody's talking about Melania slaps Donald Trump's hand now to me this it means nothing neither here nor there but apparently a lot of people say hey it's a big deal when the wife slaps the husband's hand and of course what is a big news is during Donald Trump's trip he's been bad mouthing Iran the whole time and uh, quickly here the Palestinians are calling for a day of rage during the Trump's trip the Palestinians again are calling for a day of rage and I believe they're also going on strike yes the Palestinians are on strike in solidarity with the prisoners and who who represents the Palestinians I mean 
there's really nobody representing Americans either. I mean, Donald Trump does not represent Americans. Donald Trump represents corporations. He represents BB. But I think Americans have a lot in common with the Palestinians. We have no representation. We are being taxed, but no representation. And of course, this is to be expected. The new French president will not recognize Palestine. Oh, what a surprise. A banker. A banker who will not recognize Palestine. Yeah, very surprising. Now, normally, when you have a normal president in office, they don't really talk about the lobbyists too much. But now that they hate Donald Trump, they're going to be bringing up the lobbyists. They want to know who the ex-lobbyists were on the Donald Trump payroll or in the Donald Trump White House. And, uh, and now we're going to get to the news of the ridiculous. The twilight news, you might say. Infowars has received a temporary White House press pass. Yes. And then you got people saying, uh, I think I want to throw up. This is ridiculous. I mean, Alex Jones. Alex Jones, the Infowars, he is now officially or temp temporarily officially able to get into the White House. And he has his man in there. When you think about it, this is a man who has put out a whole lot of disinformation. He had to apologize to the pizza man. He had to apologize to the yogurt man. I mean, the guy puts out false information, disinformation. He's been doing it for many, many years. Had to apologize twice. His lawyer calls him an actor. And now we have a disinformation, an actor, a man who puts false information out to manipulate the public, and now he's in the White House. It's just ridiculous. It tells you right there, whoever is advising Donald Trump, is, they're, they're complete idiots and they're morons. I mean, every time you look around, Donald Trump's making a huge mistake. Of course, early in the day or in the afternoon, there was reports of two loud bangs at a at a um, Manchester arena where Ariana Grande was doing, doing her concert. Now apparently she's okay, but then later on in the day we found out that there were 19 people killed. There were some big explosions. Again, Ariana seems to be okay. This is a breaking story, so I don't know much about this, but I am going to briefly... Uh, talk about it. The $4.1 trillion budget, that's, I don't know anything about that. Now, here's the thing that's probably not a coincidence, that uh, this is on the anniversary date, four-year anniversary date of the murder of Lee Rigby. Now, what the connection is, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about Lee Rigby. I don't know what the connection is, and um, I don't believe in coincidences. But there it is. This explosion is on the four-year anniversary of his death. Again, there are 19 dead. At least 55 are injured. At least 55 people are injured. And apparently, Miss Grande is okay. This is... What happened to the men? I mean, here you're looking at a picture. There's the entertainer. She's a woman. There's four... Whatever happened to real men having jobs? I mean, look at this. Even the cops are females anymore. I, mean, I know there's a, a feminine soft revolution going on. They want to do away with men, but it's getting ridiculous. Uh, food stamps, Medicaid on the chopping block, Michael Flynn to invoke the Fifth Amendment. He's going to plead the Fifth. And we'll just go down here and see if we can find some interesting news. Of course, like we said before, they are really slamming Iran. Everywhere Donald Trump goes on his foreign tour, he is slamming Iran. They really do want to set up a situation where they take out Syria and then Iran, Persia is next. Comey will be testifying. People are scared what he will or won't say. 
and the dog and pony show will not go away. The circus will keep on going. It's all to divert your attention away from the fact of your miserable existence. You have no good job, and you have to get on your hands and knees and go beg for a snap card, food stamps, and welfare. This crazy Florida guy said he killed his roommates because they were disrespecting him and his religion. These snowflakes, these snowflakes really get on my nerves. Disrespect them. Oh, okay. I'll take you out just for the whole world's upside down. We'll uh, keep on looking for some in interesting information here. They're calling Donald Trump mentally impeded, and we'll just keep on going. Israel is bringing out 10,000 extra police to protect Donald Trump. They're blaming it on the Palestinians, threatening the day of rage. And we'll again, we'll just keep on going down, looking for some interesting news. This is kind of interesting. The Shelby. Shelby unveils the Super Snake F-150 pickup truck. $100,000. And you put sales tax in there, way over 100000 Shelby. We all know that's a famous name, but I mean that price tag, I mean you talk about inflation. Comey is in no way a nut job, says Feinstein. Really? Is Comey a nut job? I mean, nobody knows what these people, nobody really knows these people. They are, they're not really elected. They're placed there by the corporations. Talk about the irony of it. A big game hunter is crushed by the animal that he shot. I mean, who in the hell wants to shoot an elephant? The irony of it. You shoot an elephant, he falls on you. It's just, I mean, who? nobody, you, well, if you're going to shoot an animal, you eat it. That's for sure. There's no reason to shoot an animal if you're not going to eat it. That's the first lesson in hunting. And uh, definitely no, uh, nobody's going to eat an elephant, I don't believe. Now this story, we talked about this story last week. They said that China killed uh, 20 of our spies, up to 20 of our spies. Now it's down to a dozen of our spies. Next week it'll probably be three or four. The Iranian foreign minister mocks Donald Trump's Saudi Arabian speech. And again, we've talked about this. The only people that Donald Trump is going to help is the military-industrial complex, the defense stocks, Martin, or Lockheed Martin. They're going to make out big as Americans continue to beg for breadcrumbs. Not really a whole lot of good news out there. I try to find some good news out there. I'm not sure there is any good news today. And you talk about these young kids and how messed up they are. I mean, her french fries were stale, so she maced the employees at Wendy's. At the drive through window at Wendy's, she maced them because her french fries were stale. I wonder what would have happened if she found a hair in her hamburger. Uh, now, this is sort of troubling. Saudi Arabia steals the drain the swamp slogan. I mean, drain the swamp was to drain Washington, D.C. corruption. Has nothing to do with the Middle East. These people, they need to, they'll just steal any dictatorships. I don't know. Boeing blamed for maintenance errors on Air Force One. Now, this should get Donald Trump's attention. Apparently, this happened on Obama's term. But uh, the Air Force One maintenance crew accidentally screwed up the oxygen system on Air Force One. That should get Donald Trump's attention because there's a lot of people who don't like him. Now, okay, we'll just briefly talk about this again, the Shelby F-150 Super Snake, $100,000. I mean, you, we could probably talk about this for hours on the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel, but we won't. But it, what's interesting, it's a 750 horsepower. I mean, this is a beauty, real beauty. And uh, the American doctor dies while climbing Mount Everest. 
for anybody who wants to climb the mountain, there is a death zone up there. When you get near the top, the, the air becomes very, very thin, and if you're not healthy, it can kill you. A few people have died recently trying to climb that mountain, and the we talked about the big game hunter. Okay, I'll leave you with this. Jared Kushner does not look happy. We'll do a little bit of facial analysis, body language. He doesn't look happy there. And maybe this could tell us something. That Melania is slapping the wrist of Donald Trump. What does she know that we don't know? I'm thinking that the First Lady sees that the Trump family is scared. You know, she just sits back there. And she's seeing that Ivanka, her dad... Jared, they're running scared, and it shows. It, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Look at her smile here. You don't really see her smiling very much. And then look at the face of Ivanka. Ivanka looks like she's in shock. This is the smile of somebody like, okay, okay, you rich. Because she's sort of like somebody who's just in this rich family, and she has to put up with it. But that picture of Ivanka... The picture of Jared in shock and then the smile by Melania tells me everything.